I'm going to add two more topics uh, to this uh, chapter. The first one is talking about the scope of variable. Uh, let me present you with this uh, small program. It's a class called increment. Uh, here you can see the main method. Okay, so inside the main method, I'm going to declare a variable x, and that variable is equal to one. So here I have a display statement. So before the call, x is equal to one. Right, so this here is going to print uh, before the call x is one. Then I'm going to make a call to this void method called increment. How do I know it's void? Because I don't have a variable equal and then making a call to the method, right? So, and then I'm, I'm going to pass the variable x to that method, right? So this guy is going to jump here, right? So as you can see, it's a void method. This is the name of the method, increment. And it's getting the value x as an argument, as an input. Okay, now it's going to take x, x is equal to x plus 1, and then it's going to print. Right, so knowing that this is 1, so now 1 is going to become 2, and then it's going to print x inside the method is to print 2. Now, when we go back, then we're going to make another print statement, and I'm going to display after the call and x, and we're going to see what is this value. Okay? As you can see down here, the value is also 1, right? Why? Because this x that you see declared here, this, this value of x is local to this method. Okay? Doesn't have anything to do with this x that is inside the main method. Right? So any changes made here is just reference to another location in memory, different to this one. And this is something that we have to be careful. Right? We have to be careful that we don't get confused with the variable. So before the call, x is equal to 1, as you can see here. Okay, Then it's going to make a call to the method. So now x is going to bring us 2, right? And then after the call, when it comes back, x remains as, as 1, right? So the changes made here don't so affect this value of x. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's go back to... to my code test sum. Okay, so if you guys uh, recall, here I have um, the start at the end, and then here I'm just going to get a result, and then I'm going to display result. But here I can only use integer, and I don't like that. Right? So what about if I want to just come up with two uh, goals? Okay, let's do let's do fifty point zero right to sixty five point zero. Okay. I notice that here I get an error. Okay. Why is that? Because these values are of the double type and it doesn't match the or they don't match my um, my method, right? Because here I just need input of the uh, integer type. So what should I do? Okay, so here we're going to introduce the topic of overloading. Okay. So here it will be convenient to create a new method, right? So now is that instead of having integer integer, my arguments are double double. Okay. So now here I have just a second method. Let me just move this all the way after my sum integer. Okay. Okay, uh, here you can see now I have a method called sum which is integer integer and the same method called sum again but double double. Okay, So all I need to do is just basically just bring the ins what is inside my method. Okay. And in this case I just need to match some stuff. Okay, because now I'm using double as I'm going to start at my end. Okay, so here I can just change this to start and this one to end. Just to, that way I don't have to change the, 
what is inside my method and here I just gonna make it mark to double right that way my for gets to work okay now I have two methods with two arguments of different type okay and now when the program execute you can see that this guy is, is integer integer so this guy will call the integer method so maybe I should just add a display here System dot out dot print line. I'm gonna put here calling the int in method. Okay. No, actually, this is the double double. Let me just copy this line. Let me change this. The double, double. By the way, you, you know which method is getting called. And here we're calling the int int method. Okay, let me just align everything. Okay, so now I'm gonna run it. Notice that the first three display statement we just call the int int method. Okay, and then for the last one. We are calling the double door method, right? So the compiler will match which method gets to call, right? So here we are just overloading uh, the same method with two different uh, argument type variables. Okay. So this kind of like cover the most important stuff in this chapter. Okay. Uh, at the end of the of this chapter, they talk also about stepwise refinement. And basically, they just uh, talk about the uh, the benefits of modularizing your code. Okay, so these are the benefits of stepwise refinement. But basically, you have a simpler program, right? You can reuse methods and functions, and also it's easier to develop and debug. Uh, why is easier? Because, for example, here, okay, I can localize my errors. For example, here in this method. So if I know that the rest is working well, I can just work with this area and make sure that my function works uh, before anything else. And then my program is simpler because if you look at the main program, it's just a call to other methods, right? So now from now on, when I'm looking for efficiency, I'm gonna start looking at things like this. Instead of having a bunch of code in your main method, you should have a bunch of callouts to functions. And then from from the functions you you put the pieces together, right? Like blocks. So one way of of looking at this, look at the the discussion that they have in the in the bottom up uh, or bottom down uh, design. Okay, so here you can see that you have your main method, and then from here you have the different call to different methods, right? So for the main method, you read your input. And then, for example, if you want to print your month, then here you make other callouts, right? So it's a, it's a good way of just assigning different blocks of code to people.